Bankai Star Rail has been absolutely crushing it over the course of the last year, and with the anniversary being literally right around the corner, I wonder what could be the 10 changes that will keep this game from falling off in the coming year. So, here are my suggestions. But, before we get into it, don't forget to go down and leave your own 10 things you'd like to see added or changed in Star Rail for the anniversary or, you know, the coming year. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe. It lets me know you enjoyed the content so that I can keep making more videos like this one. But, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Number 10. Just do it already, we've had a skin in the game ever since Topaz's Bellabog side quest in the form of March's dress, but we never ended up getting it as a reward. This would be the easiest addition that would make Koyo a lot of money, and also make a lot of people happy. But just as an additional side note, I want them to go slightly further beyond. Maybe since this is a turn based game and we don't have to worry about stuff like hitboxes, we can have skins that completely change animations for characters' attacks, skills, or even the ultimates. Sure, you can keep the free 4-star skins as basic costume changes, but for 5-star characters like Walter Himiko, for example, you can completely change their animations. Imagine if, for example, Himiko had a swimsuit skin, and her ultimate changed to her spiking a volleyball into the ground, and like the sand and debris completely blows all the enemies away. Just make up any idea in your mind, and they could probably do it, honestly. And they don't just have to do goofy skins, they could just do like serious ones as well, and I think it would be just really cool cool. Number 9 replayable story. Pretty self-explanatory for this one. Star Rail's story, unlike Genshin Impact, doesn't make me want to mince my brain on a meat grinder, plus Stell and Kalos are actually pretty funny at times, so I would love to go back and be able to experience dialogue that I haven't picked without going to YouTube. I mean, the Kafka side quest alone has so many dialogue choices that it can probably be longer than this very video. Number 8, Event Reruns. And speaking of repeatable stories, Star Rail does a good job of keeping certain events in the game, but it's still not all of them, for some reason. And with some very powerful light cones like before the tutorial for example, or honestly any future light cone being like potentially locked behind events that someone might not have ever even had the chance to see not even talking about playing them <laughs> rest in pieces playstation players it creates an awkward power gap between veterans and newcomers so it just feels weird to me or at least if anything hear my plea hoyoverse please at least add these light guns to the summoning pool at least that way people have a chance to get them in some way number seven let us craft higher grade materials with lower grade ones. Another easy one to explain, sometimes I can have a shit ton of materials I want to, for example, convert from green rarity to purple rarity, but you cannot do that as of now without first converting them to a blue material. Why is that? I know it's just a small quality of life feature, but sometimes the small things can make all the difference. And speaking of small but impactful changes, number six. Let us spend as much trailblaze power as we want for material runs. Sometimes I log in and I just want to grind a single thing for a single character that I'm leveling. So then tell me, why do I only have the ability to spend 60 trailblaze power per run? Let us do as many as we can. It literally won't hurt anyone and will only save time for people. But also on a side note, it would be really funny to watch Himiko and Herda potentially wipe out 24 entire waves of enemies from Himiko just rocking her skill like with the follow-up attack once, I think that shit would be hilarious. Number five, relic loadouts. Man, a lot of things are really self-explanatory here, aren't they? I don't even need to explain why this one would be so great. Although just to spice things up, I actually have an entire other suggestion to make on top of this one. Have it so that multiple characters can equip the same light cones or relics, and as long as you don't use two characters who share the same gear on the same team, you wouldn't have to keep switching your gear around. I personally think it would only encourage more experimentation, since now maybe you could try running that hackerspace set on Asta or Hanya instead of Branya or Ting Yun. You know, just to spice things up, since you wouldn't have to go through 10,000 years of gear and characters just to try to have fun with them. Speaking of not having fun, number 4. Cancel the ultimate button. This one completely baffles me. This seems very simple, but it's another feature that I don't understand why it isn't in the game already. The cooler Daniel can already cancel his skill, so why can't we cancel our ultimates? Sometimes I can accidentally cast things in the wrong order and just want to change it up, or maybe I didn't anticipate that an ultimate I wanted to use to break an enemy is just barely not enough to do that, or you know, and so on and so forth, whatever your reason is. It's a very simple gameplay change, but well, I guess if this is one of the biggest things I can even complain about, it means that the game is in a pretty good state. Right Genshin Play? Number 3. 
simulated universe auto clearing. All right, I feel like most of us have had enough of the simulated universe by now. It doesn't offer much of a challenge, and the only reason people play is because they get relics and some rewards from it weekly. So why not just let people auto clear it? You can put whatever restrictions on it that you want, like say maybe you don't get the monster material drops from auto clearing, or maybe you have to clear a certain stage ten times before you can auto clear it, or maybe it doesn't give progress towards any weekly rewards, so that you're at least encouraged to play golden gears or like swarm disaster something anything but if i'm forced to bully this poor little child again to get my glam out spears and ropes i might just lose it number two okay this one will surprise you for not being at number one but it's for us to get a five star character selector i know some people say it's unrealistic but honestly unlike genshin style has been pretty steadily power creeping a lot of its older characters and don't get me wrong, it's not like they're unusable or anything, but there's definitely much less value in someone like Well compared to a Silver Wolf, or a Jafar compared to a Fu Xuan, or a Yang Qing compared to Jing Liu. Oh my god, this guy just can't catch a break, Kenny. Anyways, us getting, and this part's important, a free standard banner 5 star selector is honestly not that big of a deal in my opinion. It'll be a nice gesture and a show of appreciation for everyone who has stuck around with the game ever since the beginning. Could also, you know, potentially help someone fill out holes in the roster to get the characters that they're lacking so i think it would be great and not that big of a deal okay so here we are number one what could it possibly be what could possibly be better than getting a free five star character selector well glad you asked because for my number one wish that will probably never happen in this game but i would really like to is for us to have the ability to go to level 90 with our characters and be able to have a form of um skill ascension now let me explain essentially what i have is an idea in in my brain is that gradually as older characters become outclassed so for example today's favorite dead horse yang Chang, who got power crept by jing liu we could introduce the ability for those older characters to go to level 90 and once you're there you could maybe get a new passive or your skill or ultimate can get powered up or hell maybe you can get a second skill for that character in general or maybe a combination of all three suggestions i don't think it will be broken since at the end of the day you'd still have to decide if you want to use skill one or skill two in any given situation but also the goal of these quote-unquote reworks won't be to make the characters meta again but rather just let them have the ability to keep up because on top of all that the idea ahead is that this level 90 system wouldn't be accessible to you unless you have every single trace of that character unlocked and maxed out excluding Adolons of course, and also have them at level 80 before the whole process can even start. And you'd have to spend additional resources to actually get them to level 90, and spend weekly boss materials to unlock both their new major traces and skills. So essentially the goal of such a system would be to make it so that you can keep using your favorite characters way into the future because realistically speaking, your favorites will be the ones who are maxed out on everything, or at least for casual players. And since newer characters will still outclass the older ones and require less investment, I don't think it will hurt their bottom line at all. Hell, maybe you could even tie a character getting their level 90 ascension to them releasing a skin so that people will get tempted into investing into those characters instead of powering up a newer one. And then they would have to spend money to fix their mistakes. Hey, this is a gotcha game after all but yeah with that we have all 10 features that star rail should implement for its anniversary and as i said earlier please share your top 10 in the comments also did you like that system that i proposed at number one i actually have a video coming up where i'll be theory crafting concepts for something that is of a similar nature in the sense that i'll be giving buffs to characters but in a different way so uh if you don't want to miss that video then consider subscribing it lets me do more crazy stuff on youtube and i greatly appreciate it and hey if you made it this far into the video then I actually have a little secret for you. I have uh, another feature that Star Wars should implement. I saved it just for you. Come here. Let me tell you about it. Closer. Closer. They should add a jump button. How is that shit still not in the game? Why are we still